Hello, people. I'm Lee Cole 3, and this is uh, the Lee Cole 3 podcast along with my partner, James Proctor. James, how are you doing today? Hey, doing well, Lee. How are you doing today? Very well. And i like to thank you, James, because this has been uh, the busiest, uh, the most views that this channel has received ever in one month. Oh, very good. 200,000. Mm-hmm. And uh, we learned about uh, how important um, shorts are and how quick you could put a short out and it'd be at 200. And then you look at it the next day and it'd be at 2000 overnight. Mm-hmm. I know, and that just happened, didn't it? It's just yeah, it crazy. just happened. Then, which uh, it's kind of amazing because with shorts, you'll put them out for two, three days; they won't be doing anything, Mm-mm. and then all of a sudden they'll just take off. And not only that, when people come in, they look at your other shorts. So we basically are we're committed to putting out a short every day, at least one of them. Mm-hmm. And uh, sometimes they pay off, other times they don't. But they're very interesting because you just never know which ones are going to take off, huh? Yeah, exactly. And then I think we're really close as well uh, uh, of getting past 3 million total views for this channel. That will happen this week. Uh, Two years and 3 million. So pretty good. Yep. Yep. And uh, uh, for this type of show, it's good. Listen, we're not Mm -hmm. mobsters. We come on here. We put out mob uh, content. And I think we do a good job. Real mob content. And that's why you see that right below us. Mm -hmm. Uh, Some people don't like what we do. uh, But you know what? We keep doing it, don't we? And we do it consistently. Yeah. Three, four, we put out four or five shows a week. Yeah, exactly. And that's, I think that's what pays off is that we're, we're consistent about it. And, you know, but, you know, it's a lot of fun, though, working together and yeah. finding out new stuff. You know, it seems like every day or two, you know, it's definitely not boring. You have, and we put in a lot of research. And yep. we put a lot of research. Yeah. And, uh, uh, we got our website up. We got a nice email list now. Uh, people uh, giving us the email. We're going to have two websites up uh, within the next couple of days, and we'll explain that after the next couple of days. You don't have to really go to them today and tomorrow because mm-hmm. we're going to be making some adjustments on them and stuff. But uh, uh, realmobcontent.com—that's the name of uh, uh, one of the websites. And um, that one's going to be connected to our other website. We'll talk about that once it's developed. Uh, yeah. But we have a, a very big email list. People have joined our email list. So please keep on doing that. Um, but anyway. Yeah, that's good. James. Oh, I just wanted to mention one thing on that is, and the one of the things that we're doing with the website, you know, over 70% of the of the people that visit our site um, are even YouTube, they're doing it through a mobile device. So we're mobile optimizing our, um, you know, the everything that we're doing, like the website. Okay. Yes, exactly. We're going to, and uh, right now we're in, uh, we're building the mobile site. The mm-hmm. mobile site's different than the other sites and you got to right. adjust them properly. Uh, and that's what we're doing right now. So, uh, we'll have a sweet ass mobile site out very shortly. Yes. Uh, right now it looks like crap, but that's not that's not the final product. That's nope. that's something we just put there so people could fill out the email list, and uh, we send them uh, anybody that fills out that email list. We're sending a gift to. Yep. Um, okay, so we're going to get into John Panisi. Yes. Now you know something when you come on here and you are an informant. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got to understand you're going to be attacked sometimes. And uh, when you start attacking people back, uh, that especially just write something that you don't like, then you make guys like us wondering why you're doing it yes. and who the hell Michael Ryan is, you know? And uh, <laughs> uh, the name Michael Ryan seems to set off John Panisi, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. And again, this week, it, you see it. You see it in a on his comments, on his video, someone just asked the question, you know. And we're going to show that right now. Uh, Give us one minute here. Okay, so we're going to show this right now. And uh, Dana Bruce, uh, 4460, uh, kind of uh, hit a raw nerve with John Panisi. He says, whatever happened to Michael Ryan? And here's what Panisi writes, (laughs) talking about threats. This is the guy that claims that he's... uh, gotten all better in his life, and he's not the guy he used to be. Uh, But we hear that a lot. Uh, Let me tell you something. Uh, This is what he's saying. You're going down a dangerous path with me, parole or no parole. Ask my friends. 
what I'm capable of and see if you still want to go there because I'll gladly meet you and watch you do pee-pee in your pants. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm glad he's not going to make him do poo-poo in his pants. <laughs> Uh, and, and, and I'm worried that he might get mad at us and then we might be peeing our pants soon. Yeah, oh, let's hope not. <laughs> That'd be so, embarrassing. So isn't it amazing that this guy who is on here and has actually, uh, informed on people, you know, uh, uh, he, he's informed about, uh, seven families. He's informed yeah. on, uh, a young guy that was just an, an associate also like him or i'm mm -hmm. sorry a soldier yeah uh, and then he t uh, then he uh talked about the structure of the family uh with maddie madonna stephen crea and uh a letter that was sent and uh, uh from from prison and it goes on and on and on i'm not we're not going to get into that part we know that uh what he did if people want to know what he did all you got to do is look him up it's very simple but we're talking about right now what do you think about uh John Panisi threatening people currently. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just, it's just, a, I think, poor optics, in my opinion. It's, it, you know, there's no need for it. I mean, uh, as you know, you know, we, you'll have trolls from time to time, but, you know, if you put out good content, that stuff tends to be minimal. But yeah, I'm just concerned. You know, my concern is more about, you know, people having an opinion. He goes off on them. He thinks, you know, he's saying this is, the intel you know he's always talking about how this is for the intelligent people or whatever and then you know someone asks a question whatever happened to michael ryan i didn't even know who he was and so uh, we did the, research we we, yeah. were, we went out and found out who michael ryan was you yeah. see that's why maybe you shouldn't have done this because all of a sudden it's like who's michael ryan yeah, and uh, exactly. we'll get into michael ryan is but we know he was a little casey associate don't we yes so and he uh was there at least from the 70s and 80s and 90s and so uh we know that the guy's still alive so you know, we're not going to say where but we do, in, except right. in new jersey yeah and uh for some reason this michael ryan has really gotten underneath john uh i'm in john panisi's skin but let's talk about something else too before we go there yeah okay underneath here there's this guy <laughs> this guy i gotta orange con 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 whatever 180 yeah this is his name and, you know, it's kind of funny because this guy's provoking John Panisi also. Yeah. And and not only provoking them, it's some serious threats he's making toward John Panisi. And John Panisi is replying to him. Yes. Why? Why You're having a public fight on here. And you're supposed to be a guy that has gotten your act together. And uh, um, but by reading this, it doesn't sound like he has much of his act together, does he? No, I mean, that, and that's that's his reputation even uh, before he just is very um, petty, tends to has an ang has anger issues and, and also paranoia issues. And and, you know, he'll just he gets into these uh, rants like this and, and just we know. Yeah, and we well. know he has anger issues. He shot someone to death and that he went to prison and did his time for it before yeah. he came out. And uh, so we do know he has anger issues. But we're not yeah. here to get into that murder either because we did a show about that. But Orange Coon writes, John, uh, okay, I'm going to get to him. He goes, John, they uh, should really start cleaning those nasty air ducts in the kitchen. This is that one that, that we had a restaurant, I'm, I'm yeah. assuming. It's a fire hazard just waiting to happen. I also noticed the rough neighborhood, how rough the neighborhood has gotten. I fear that the workers' safety at night uh, leaving there. You don't know what can happen to you nowadays. So this is someone coming in. It's obvious that Orange Coon must be uh, a former associate or yeah. knows him and literally has threatened him here. <laughs> and then uh, the worst, John did the worst thing you could do. He got caught, caught up with this. Yeah. And, and John writes back, uh, you and your friends should also be careful when you're eating there every week. Rough neighborhood. I wouldn't worry about uh, the staff, but more about your own safety. Like you said, you never know. And this guy, Orange Coon, writes back, uh, John, they've got a rat problem as well. I guess he's calling him a rat. Yeah. And, and he says as well, I hope the city doesn't shut them down. God forbid if the restaurant burns down because the owners neglect. Mm -hmm. Maybe when the inspector comes, he'll uh, find something there 
He wasn't expecting. Who knows what he'll find in the restaurant? After all, connected to someone, uh, all connected to someone who has a bad history. John, I'm a tough guy myself, but even uh, I know I couldn't beat five guys coming at me. Hmm. It's good to have friends, John. And then John answers them. A real tough guy wouldn't be stupid enough to send punk messages on YouTube and have a nice day, you mutt punk. <laughs> I can't uh, believe yeah. this. I, this guy's having an open fight. Yeah. This guy's tied to the feds and he's had an open fight with a guy. It's obvious, it's, it's obvious that this guy does not like Panisi. It seems like yeah. a lot of people don't like Panisi. No. And he's having an open fight with this guy. Yeah, and you know what's interesting though is what what it is that a lot of the made there made guys or associates uh, that's out there today they they get upset more with him more than any other person out there saying you know that people you know a lot of people have cooperated a lot of people have YouTube shows but he really rubs people the wrong way and you hear that all the time and basically what I'm trying to say is is that he upsets people because he'll talk about active guys for example he will also bring up things that is about people that you know he basically names names shows pictures he shows photos of active guys and it it's just you know if people don't want to get jammed up and it just really you know makes him look you know worse than a rat because he's just continuing to do it this is a pretty big boy right here ain't it <laughs> yeah it is a and, uh, this is Eugene Eugene Bobsy Costelli, and you know he put he testified against him. Yeah, but Costelli's out of got out of jail, you know, and uh, um, he matter of fact, um, he was gonna he decided to go to trial. It was a bad mistake because he wound up doing a little extra time, but because of a COVID, he got out early. Yeah, and uh, Eugene Costelli, look at that guy. I mean, those are the guys that you put in jail. You know, you don't think that guys like this guy is. Maybe he's the one that wrote the who the hell knows. But if he's yeah. writing, this guy's writing me stuff uh, and threatening me, I, I'd be a little bit nervous too, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. And then that's what's kind of weird now is that you do have, I mean, it probably not so much the maid guys, but a lot of these associates are actually, you know, they'll use another name or whatever, but they're they're getting on YouTube and they're actually um, responding to comments or, or they'll send emails. You know, we'll get emails too. I mean, it's just... Um, you know, and, and then we would go back and verify, and it's real. So, I mean, he's really rubbing people the wrong way is what's happened. And he's doing the stories on them. He already did a story that backfired on him. And uh, possibly uh, Stephen Creel will get a new trial because of what he did. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing we're not going to get into because we did a video on that. But this guy is like... And what does he say? The more intelligent show? I don't yeah, see something the intelligent people in the room or some something like that. I you know, he he prides himself as being this guy that's wise and intelligent and and but when I listen to his shows, it's always he he it's like it's sour grapes. He he blames everyone else for you know, everyone else around in the life were bad but and went against the code. But he was the only one that stood with it and and but then He's the one that actually didn't even have the feds on his radar, and he goes uh, into uh, the FBI and basically starts singing. And, they didn't and, even and know who that right. was. And, and, and accordingly, uh, first of all, we're going to also talk about that. But first, let's get back to Michael Ryan. Michael Ryan. Okay. So why don't you tell us who Michael Ryan is? Yeah, so you know, it was interesting because I didn't know until, you know, Panisi put this or this this dialogue two days ago. And so what I found out about Michael Ryan is that, you know, he's an associate uh, in the New Jersey faction of the family of the, the Casey family, you know, been around from the 70s and the 80s. Uh, he was around uh, uh, some of the, the, you know, major guys like, uh, you know, Tom McCarty, um, also, you know, around, uh, you know, Martin, Very serious. Shetta, he was around serious guys. Those. Serious guys, okay. but he never was made. Nothing like that. But anyway, um, he was involved. He got caught up in a couple of trials. Well, uh, actually, one, it was yeah. one main indictment that came yeah. down, 
and it came and it came down in April of ninety one. Is that correct? That is correct. It, yep, and it it involved a murder or a couple of murders, but him specifically was involved uh, being accused of being involved in the murder of this guy named Vincent Creparata, which happened in June Little of Sinatra 84. was his nickname. Right? Yes, it was exactly. And so a group of guys, this guy, uh, Little Sinatra, was coming out into a, a, a parking lot and mm -hmm. uh, a group of three to four guys, I say, uh, pounced on him. Yep. With, uh, uh, with, and they did it with um, the worst way to get beat to death of you ask me, golf clubs. Yeah. And they said that they beat, he beat, they beat him so bad that there was indentations in the sidewalk around him. Uh, yeah. And he died of uh, massive head, head drama. And this yeah, guy, exactly. this guy did not want to uh, kick back more money to the Lucchese's. He felt like he was kicking back enough. Yeah, he was doing. A, he had a lot of the machine, the uh, the poker machines and, and clubs and everything. And so he and this guy uh, Caparata was was an associate as well. And so you know, basically, they're saying, "Hey, you need to pay your debts. Um, you know, you need to." be kicking up and so yeah they, they the one that got a got convicted was the tom riccardi and and then um you know uh they were actually at the end of the day um ryan got found uh, not guilty on this a couple guys went to prison on the murder but there was also a murder of a guy named albert meglia he was a scarfo family associate mm -hmm. and an innocent bystander named michael white uh, yeah. And once again, there was no charges on that. Uh, right. And so those were back in the 70s. Those were back in the, in the 70s. In the 70s, but got caught up in this racketeering. They put uh, everything in this charge. So these guys yeah. charged with murder. They all went down for this, these murders. Yeah. And, and you know uh, what's yeah, and you know what's fascinating to me on this is that there was that relationship between what they call the Bruno Scarfo family and the Lucchese family. So it's interesting to me that the state when they bring their witnesses, the, the two main witnesses they bring on this trial are, you know, big names. Um, Diarco, you know, Alphonse Diarco, and then little Phil Leonetti. They're the well, ones Leonetti, that, along, uh, didn't Diarco and Leonetti, they actually testified in the murder trial. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They testified in it. And so both of them. Yes, and uh, it's just fascinating stuff. But, you know, we did not even know who Michael Ryan was. We did not care who Michael Ryan was. But, yeah, you know, now we know who Michael Ryan is. But i like to know, what is it about Michael Ryan that sets off? If anybody knows, uh, you can get a hold of us at LeeCole1010 uh, Gmail. Write me. Let me know. i like to know what the story is on Michael Ryan and why Michael Ryan pisses off John Panisi so bad. Yeah, John Panisi, yeah. I don't have anything against you. James Proctor has nothing against you. Mm -hmm. uh, we do, you know, we do shows here. A lot of mm -hmm. people don't like us. Uh, some people say that we're in bed with the uh, uh, rats, and other people say that that we go after them too much. So mm -hmm. let's just say we're we're in between. Yeah. Uh, but you do not have Dominic mm -hmm. Chicali, or <clears throat> you don't have uh, Michael Francis, and you and I'm not trying to put you in the class with any of those guys. To be honest with you. Our, uh, well, we don't have uh, Mikey Scars out here in the public attacking people in their chat rooms and stuff and having fights with them and then and, and making it so public. <clears throat> and you're still tied. You're still tied to the feds, which makes it even more amazing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, anyone that goes on to Panisi's um, YouTube channel, puts comments, you, you guarantee you the feds are. Are watching it they see everything that's going on and I, and I don't know how long panisi's still going to be sounds like in the next year or so he should be off of his parole or whatever and it'll be i'm not even sure if he is i don't really yeah. care that's up right but right. see john panisi has to realize this this thing that you did the other day where you're threatening this guy it's all over reddit now yeah it is it's everywhere on reddit so it's not even the mob genre you're dealing with. You're also dealing with Reddit, too. So everybody wants to know who Michael Ryan is. And so people have been dropping all sorts of stuff. We didn't know about the murder with Michael Ryan. I read it in Reddit. And then mm -hmm. we started uh, searching. And uh, yeah. then we have somebody that does research for us. Mm -hmm. Who uh, He's uh, really good at research. He's come up with some stuff. 
-hmm. And uh, but what we're going to get to one other thing uh, did with John Panisi. There were two yeah. things. But one of them I'm not going to talk about because uh, there's not enough evidence. Uh, the other one was just something being said on the street that James is going to be talking about why Panisi uh, flipped. Uh, yeah. So so what is that, James? Yeah. So so basically, we one of our sources um, has knows a you know, basically a cousin's a made member of the Gambino crime family. And and so he's known. Um, and we're just going to tell you his story, but we're not, we're going to yeah, say. No name, none of that. We're, we're not going to put it, and we're not going to say the story is true. Right. But this is his story. And we know that it's, an, that it's a Gambino associate talking to somebody about Panisi and why Panisi was having issues on the street uh, and why it, one of the two reasons that he flipped. Why don't you talk about it, James? Yeah, yeah. And I'll kind of read what what the, what I've got here. So basically, he says that. Uh, so we know the story of of him being in the uh, John Panisi was in the Lacasey family. One thing is the context when he was growing up, because he was in the Ozone Park, Howard Beach area. He was he did run around with people in the uh, Gambino family, but he has never made nothing like that. He's only later after he got out of prison came a Lacasey. Member. But anyway, uh, what they're saying is he says that John is playing both sides because of how badly he is being treated by the Lucchese's family. So he's basically yeah, reaching he out. He's playing both sides at that time. At that time. Okay. So he is reaching back to some of his friends uh, with the uh, Gambinos. And the thing is, he, you know, John was getting frustrated. He couldn't transfer to another crew or another family. And, and so uh, he said he was staying at the Gambinos who he grew up with. Uh, cared about his problems and and so basically the gambinos were just using john panisi to get information about what's going on in the lucchese family so anyway um john one day came to the gambinos and had the idea to get his capo big john shell because he was just getting tired of him and basically he was making threats about big john saying he had cut the guy into hundreds of pieces if he wouldn't shut up his mouth and and so the plan was for the Gambinos to make a beef about some real estate scam that the Lucases and Gambinos had going together. And then John would deliberately lose the argument and the sit down while giving information to the Gambinos. And then in the end, the Gambinos would keep all the profits while Big John it, yeah. would be blamed and shelled for losing so much money. So yeah, and, and this, this, this is so far fetched because that ain't yeah. going to happen. No, no, exactly. No. And then, so they had to sit I mean, if this down. is going through John's head and, and the Gambinos and they're sitting down and they're, it's obvious the Gambinos are playing with them. And it's obvious yeah. that this ain't going to happen. You, you, right. It's not that easy to shelve with somebody that's your boss. Um, right. So exactly. John Panisi, so John Panisi once, away, once again gets in his little strange world. Yeah, he does. And then, you know, basically they do have a sit down. The sit down ended up unresolved. And so and nothing again, happened in the sit down. Nothing, nobody got shelved, right? Right. Nothing okay. got. But John then was started to get under suspicion with with the people in Lucchese's because he was acting weird. That's what it was. He started acting strange. And so, and John, before that, he was actually known as a good negotiator. They loved to have him involved in some of these sit-downs because he did a, a good job. But then the rumor got out that John, that Panisi was, was given information to the Gambinos, and it made people uh, in the Lucchese start calling John a rat, and he became very unpopular. And so this, is, this happened maybe, you know, a few months before. Before he actually went into the FBI office, right? So you had the, you, so you have the Lucchese's thinking that he's uh, dealing with the Gambinos behind uh, Lucchese's back, basically, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. And then, uh, so you know, the Gambinos didn't really have much use for him. You know, who he thought was friends, you know, again were treacherous, and and they just, you know, used that information. But, and this Gambino know, associate that's given this information to our other guy. He's basically saying that uh, the Gambinos were using him. Oh, yeah, they were using him, you know, but it was never going to work. You know, Big John wasn't going to get, you know, Big John at the time was under indictment anyway. So, I mean, it, it just wasn't going to work. You know, the story, I don't know if it's true or not. The source, I, you know, has, hasn't said anything before that's been an, 
uh, found untrue. So it's been a reliable source. So, but that's the word on the street, though. You know, I can I can verify that that was the word on the street at least. So, and we're gonna cut. We're gonna talk more about this down the road when we see what happens. Uh, maybe uh, John Panis will get upset that we uh, brought out some information on Michael Ryan. Mm. But I would like to say to John Panisi, you brought him up. You know, you brought him up, and, and it wasn't us. We, we, we're just doing the follow-up. It was Reddit. Reddit was all over this, John Panisi. So you got to know, when you do these shows on YouTube, you're going to be all over Reddit. Yeah, well, I'm yeah, all exactly. over Reddit. I don't even look because the things that people <laughs> say about me on Reddit, forget it. I, I'd go nuts. Uh, well, yeah, and it's just he's got to he's got to learn on that. But uh, you know, he's just he's just got these got these weird issues about him, and and so just thought it was an interesting interesting chain of events lately with him. I seen a name of James Proctor. I seen your name on Reddit. You know what it said? What James, is that? James the Spree Killer Proctor. Oh, okay. <laughs> so James it. is in one of our fantasy baseball leagues, and he named his team the Texas Free Killers. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Even though he doesn't work his team enough. But anyway. Yeah, I know. I got to <laughs> I gotta do that. God. We do. Uh, just so people do know, we have fantasy football coming up. If you're interested, you can get a hold of us. Uh, we got a couple leagues. We had one league last year. Very successful. It's coming back. I'm going to start up a second league, too. Yes. Okay. Uh, so we'll get some funny stuff that we're going to do. Okay, we're going to talk about this one right here. And you guys are going to recognize her, but this is kind of a joke. Okay, this is... She looks like Sammy Gravano's grandmother. <laughs> Would you say that? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty okay. wild. Uh, That's from Throw Mama from the Train. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Yeah, yeah, okay. I've seen that. Okay, so uh, here's something Sammy said, and people, a lot of people took it serious. Uh mm -hmm. And let me tell you something. When it comes to Sammy, you don't know whether he's being serious because Sammy has done some evil stuff. He has. Uh, yeah. But we're just going to put this up here. You decide and see Sammy smirks. But we, we, I just found this quite funny. Here we go. I never wanted to talk about it, but I'm going to tell you what it is. When I was younger, my grandmother was in her 80s, 85, 86 years old. She was suffering. A lot of pain. She was wheelchair bound. We would have to take her upstairs. She lived on the second floor and then take her out of the wheelchair and carry her down the stairs and stuff. I really wanted to get her out of this pain. I picked her up from the bed, put her in a wheelchair. I brought her to the head of the stairs and I threw her down the stairs. There was no pain. On the fourth bounce, she was out of pain. So I really felt I did a good thing for myself, for her, <laughs> the family. But I loved her. I really did. So it wasn't a vicious thing. I was just getting her out of pain. And that's her behind me in the urn. <laughs> Even if Sammy's joking, why the hell do you tell a story like that? You know, that, well, here's the thing about Sammy. That, and, you know, I know some people that, that know Sammy. That's his sense of humor. That's how he... He likes to bust people. Talking balls. about killing his yeah. grandmother and tossing. I know him he's got a weird, weird sense of humor. But he also is another one talking about anger. He's another guy that has an angry, angry issues with yes, especially John, men. Yeah, John Panisi uh, might be uh, a ch uh, one of an uh, illegitimate child of Sammy Gavano <laughs> the way he acts. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I mean that's just he likes to bust balls that way. He just thinks that. You know, he likes to do stuff like that. And, and the reason, you know, what I thought was interesting is I, we get messages all the time. Did you hear about, about when um, Sammy threw his grandmother down the stairs? And, you know, we always hear that. And um, that's not true. That's not true. And then anyway, but Sammy would, we but found see, that's the, the thing. clip. <laughs> well, one thing we know is Sammy would never kill a relative. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, right. he, has he ever, <laughs> he's never been known to kill a relative. Oh, we know he has. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, well, why would he joke about killing a relative? You already have known for killing yeah. a relative. Yeah, and he gets mad when people talk about that relative. We're going to do mm -hmm. a show on that. <laughs> uh, we're going to do a show on that, and that relative and that killing. You know, yeah. it sounds like a, it sounds like a good good show because these guys are very sensitive when it comes to certain things. We know Panisi sensitive because Michael Ryan. I want to know what Michael Ryan did. Were they in prison together? 
Yeah, that's uh, a good that's a good point. You know, and that might have been what it was because, you know, because it, it's a generational difference, right? It's, it's one guy's in his mid seventies and the other guy's around fifty, so fifty two or whatever. So, yeah, but he did time yeah. in the nineties for the murder. Exactly, yeah, I mean, for, and maybe that's how they got to know one another. Yeah, I mean, because uh, at that time, uh, Ryan was running through the system. But here's a challenge to people. If you know who Michael Ryan is and why John Panisi hates him so much, please let us know. And yes. Orange Coon, if anybody knows who Orange Coon is, who left the, that argument, we'd be interested in knowing about that. Wouldn't yes. we, James? Yeah, I think it'd be fascinating to, to know that because... You know, it's a lot of stuff that's going on in the background. But, man, I think, you know, from people on the street, you know, there's no one that's hated more than Panisi. I mean, you get people, they don't feel that way about even John A. Light or, or Sammy or they any have, of those, those guys. guys have their group. Something about Panisi. I mean, it's, it, I guess it's it's things like this. And, and, and you know, you got to remember, guys that Panisi testified at, are still young and out in the street. You know, that may be what it is, right? Because, you know, the others, you know, like, you know, Shikali, that's like, what, 25, 20 years ago, and then Sammy's 30 or 40 years ago, and then um, A-Light was way back, you know, what, 15 years ago. So, yeah, you got a good point there, that this is more recent stuff that John Panisi's done and testified against. Yeah, and and you know when you got a guy like that guy I showed running around, running around, and uh, mm -hmm. he, he's angry. Uh, I think the best thing for you to do, Mister Panisi, is just do your show and stop fighting with these people because then you got people like us are going to be wondering who Michael Ryan is. Yeah, and, we, and we're going to find out about Michael Ryan. Mm -hmm. I'll guarantee you that. Okay, the search yeah, is on. Right. Yes, right. and then we're talking about it, so other people are going to start looking for Michael Ryan now. Yeah, and we're going to get all sorts of. Uh, uh, maybe Michael Ryan himself will get a hold of us. Yeah, that'd mean? be cool. Yeah. Or Orange Coon. Orange Coon. You can get a hold of us. Yeah. You know, and uh, but any and, and I'm gonna talk about one more thing. Uh yeah. this is going kind of a fun show, but I'm gonna talk about one thing. I'm gonna talk about trolls, faceless trolls, real quick. Okay. People, we have to understand that trolls don't have as much power as they, it's a small group of people that think they're very powerful. They do horrible things to people's shows. Mm -hmm. They attack them and they try to tell them who they're going to have on and who they can't have on. Us as content creators, we have to let the no trolls know that they have no power. All they are are losers, especially the faceless, the faceless cowards that pretend that they are gangsters. They pretend they're old men mm -hmm. or uh, they pretend they're tough guys. Uh, but they're not, especially when we know who they are. Yeah. You know, and it, but this is it. If people want to follow them, go follow them. Trolls, mind your business. Yeah. Get a life. Okay. Yeah. These trolls are the, they talk about hating rats, but they don't go after the rats. They go after the people that don't do what they want them to do. They yeah. go against their own people. You well, they'll go against each other. You know, it's funny how many times that, you know, they're, you know, you can't keep up with who they're friends with this week. You know, it just changes every week. And then that's why, you know, the best thing we ever did, uh, Lee, was we just do our own thing. We don't we're not on any side, you know, and we just, you know, we just do what we do, you know, just crank out the content. And they're causing all this conflict right now. But those mm -hmm. people are causing the conflict with I would tell these people, don't give them the power. They don't have they don't have the power, they think. They're just horrible human beings in their personal life. And they take yeah. it out onto other people. Yeah. And uh, I don't care who knows who, the certain ones I'm talking about. Uh, they know who I'm talking about. And I can make it a lot. I can, I can, I can bring up the, bring this up a hundred times if I wanted to. Uh, but I'm not going to, especially from what I know about some of you guys. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, um, with that, we're not going to talk. I'm not going to talk about trolls no you more. Know, yeah. Like that I mentioned saying that was interesting to me was that we had a group of trolls that really a month ago or so attacked us and it was very interesting that they were uh, there was a campaign saying get everyone to unsub don't follow Lee Cole and James Proctor and it was interesting it, it didn't even 
do a dent at all. Nothing, in their nothing, nothing. nothing. Our, our show's better than ever, bigger than ever. It didn't do a damn I thing. I think they were ever even subscribed to us. It's yeah. funny. And when they come into the chat, I just block them. Let them come in with a new name. I'll block them again. Yeah, it didn't have any effect on us. This big campaign, this big funeral or whatever, it never did anything. So anyway, I just had oh, to yeah, throw yeah, that yeah. out there. They overrate those things. Oh, yeah, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. You got a young guy pretending he's an old man with a with a with a mouth, and then you got another guy that's acting like a tough guy and he's a clown. But yeah. anyway, we said we had to say you guys want to talk crap today. I talk crap about you. So yeah. now now you can do three shows about it. I'm doing you a favor. Yeah. But anyway, James, thanks yeah. a lot. Yeah, of course. Okay, everybody, please. Oh, I always forget to do this, and I don't know why. It's like I don't like uh, subs or something. I don't know. Okay, people, please subscribe, hit the like, and the reminder bell. Uh, we're going to be doing more shows like this. Sunday, we're going to be releasing another show. Mm -hmm. Sunday uh, at, at noon, we always release a show. That's our favorite day to release a show. And Fridays. Fridays and, and then during the week, we try to get four shows out a week. And we just like to thank everybody for all your support and helping this show grow. Thank uh, you. Yeah, James, what would you like to say on our way out? No, no. I just uh, again, thank you, everyone. It's just, it's you know, I'm just really, it's just fun doing this. It's you know, I just really appreciate you know everyone's thoughts, everyone putting nice comments, the the likes, you know, and and we enjoy even getting into the you know the little debates on these um, comments. It's it's all fun. So thanks, everyone. We appreciate it. Okay, my man. We're out of here. Take care, people. Thank you. Have a great weekend.